In this video, we're going to be talking about how to use your TI-83 graphing calculator to solve the regular types of normal curve problems you would see in sections 6.1 and 6.2 of your textbook. So the first thing that you would need to do for these problems is to first draw a picture of the normal curve. Then once you've drawn a picture and you've made some assessments, you're going to be able to know what to plug into your calculator. First thing you would do is turn your calculator on, then hit second, then hit the VARS button, then hit number two, normal CDF. Then what you need to input here is the lower value, the upper value, the mean, the standard deviation, and then close the parentheses. So we have an example here. Let's say we want to find the area between z is equal to negative 2.3. We put negative 2.3. Then we hit the comma. And z is equal to positive 1.77. Then we put in positive 1.77. Then we need to put in a comma again. Since this is the standard normal curve, our mean is zero, so we put in a zero. And since this is the normal curve, our standard deviation is one. So we put in a one there, we close the parentheses, and hit enter. So this tells us the area between those two z scores is 0 0.9509. Now, a few things to keep in mind that we'll look at some other examples for. You need to approximate positive infinity with a very large number like a bunch of nines in problems where positive infinity is an upper limit. You also will see problems where negative infinity is a lower limit and you have to approximate it with a very small number like a bunch of negative nines. Another thing to keep in mind is make sure that you are using the commas. If you don't put commas in, the calculator is going to give you garbage and you also need to make sure that you're using the correct negative button. So the negative button we're talking about is the one over here directly below number three and right next to the enter button. Don't use this minus button over here. This is only for subtraction and your calculator will give you errors if you use this one instead of this one. Now we'll take a look at some problems we saw in the previous video, but we're gonna go over how to solve these using the graphing calculator now. First example we have here, we wanna find the area between z is equal to zero and z is equal to positive 1.42. First thing we would need to do here, draw a picture of our normal curve. Our mean is zero in the middle and z is equal to 1.42. So that's gonna go here. And we shade in the area we wanna find. So here we can easily see zero is our lower limit and 1.42 is our upper limit. So now we have enough information to know exactly what to put in the calculator. So for our calculator, we're going to do normal CDF. We're going to put in 0 as our lower, 1.42 as our upper. Now I didn't write it here, but in the last video it stated that this is the standard normal curve. So our mean is equal to 0, and our standard deviation is equal to 1. Then we would close the parentheses and hit enter. So we put everything to the calculator, we hit enter, we get 0.4221 or 0.4222 if we round off to four decimal places, which matches the answer we got the last time. Now let's say we want to find the area between z is equal to negative 1.42 and z is equal to positive 1.2. Again, we draw our picture. Mean falls in the middle. Since this is a standard normal curve, negative 1.42 is below the mean, and positive 1.2 is above the mean, and we want to find this area in here. So we can easily see that negative 1.42 is our lower limit, and positive 1.42 is our upper limit. So we can see what to plug into the calculator. So we want to do normal CDF. Our lower is negative 1.42. Our upper is going to be positive 1.2. Our mean is going to be 0 because this is a standard normal curve. And our standard deviation will be 1. So we plug all this into the calculator. And we get 0 0.8071. or 80.71%. I know that this value differs a little bit from what we got using the tables in the last video, but this is close enough 
if you're using whether you're using the calculator or the tables on a test as long as you show all of your work and this is showing your work for using the calculator writing down exactly what you put into the calculator it's okay the calculator is a little bit more exact than the tables because the tables do have to round some numbers off but it's pretty close enough it's not like you know we're working for nasa sending rockets into space where we need to be very very exact let's look at another example here Find the area above z is equal to negative 1.84. So the first thing we need to do, draw a picture, standard normal curve, so our mean is zero in the middle. Z is equal to negative 1.84, so we mark that down over here. And we want to find the area above it, so we shade the area above it. So now over here, we can see what our lower limit is. This is our lower value, but we can't really see what our upper limit is. This is an example where our upper limit is positive infinity. The normal curve goes on forever in both directions. It never actually touches the x-axis underneath it. So this would be positive infinity over here. So our upper limit, we're going to input a bunch of positive nines. Because we can't actually put infinity into our calculator, the best thing that we can do is put in a number that's very, very, very big. So this will be our upper limit. So now what we're going to put into the calculator, normal CDF, negative 1.84 as our lower, a bunch of nines, a bunch of positive nines to represent positive infinity as our upper limit, our mean is zero, standard deviation is one. And we get 0 0.9671. When you're doing these problems, it's better to include more nines than less nines. Sometimes in the application problems we'll see in section 6.2, if you don't put in enough nines, your answer is not going to be as exact as it should be. So we can get here point nine six seven one or ninety six point seven one percent. Now let's say we want to find the area below z is equal to negative 1.84. Again, we start off by drawing our picture, negative 1.84, and we want to find the area below that, so we're going to shade everything over here. Okay, so now here we can see negative 1.84 is our upper limit. It's the higher value but we can't clearly see what our lower limit is. Here our lower limit is negative infinity because the graph does go on forever in this direction. And we're going to approximate negative infinity with a bunch of negative nines. And that will be our lower limit. Here we're gonna input into our calculator, normal CDF, a bunch of negative nines, negative 1.84, then our mean, which is 0, and our standard deviation, which is 1. Then hit Enter. And we get 0 0.03288 or 0 0.0329. Or 3.29%. Now let's find the area above z is equal to 1.7. So we have our mean, and they tell us 1.7 is the z-score we care about, and we want to find the area above it. So that would be this shaded area over here. This is another example where we can see what our lower limit is. It's 1.7, but we don't have a clear upper limit. We're going off forever in the positive direction, so that means our upper limit is going to be positive infinity, which we will approximate with a bunch of positive nines. So what we'll put into our calculator is this. Our mean is zero, our standard deviation is one. We get 0 0.0445 or 0 0.0446 if we round to four decimal places. 4.46. Let's look at this example. We want to find the area below z is equal to 1.7. So first we draw our picture. We mark down the z-score mentioned in the problem. We want to find the area below it, so this is what we shade. So here we can see our upper limit is 1.7. And since we have the lower half of the curve shaved all the way down here, 
This means negative infinity is going to be our lower limit, which we're going to approximate with a bunch of negative nines. We will plug the following into our calculator. Our mean is zero, standard deviation is still one because these are standard normal curve problems. We end up getting 0.9554. or 95.54%. Last example, we want to find the area between z is equal to 0 0.71 and z is equal to 2.09. So the first thing we would do, draw our picture. Mean is in the middle. Z scores they mention are 0 0.71 and 2.09. And they want us to find the area between these. So this one is a little bit annoying to do using the tables, but using calculators, we can clearly see what our lower limit is and clearly see what our upper limit is. And it's easy to see exactly what we'll be plugging into the calculator. So we plug everything in and we end up getting this. 0.2205. Or 22.05%. So if you're using your calculator on exams or on quizzes where you might have to show work, you need to include your drawing of the normal curve, whether you're using the tables or whether you're using the calculator. And if you're using the calculator, the additional work that you need to show is you need to write down exactly what you're plugging into your calculator and what you end up getting.